back on. I don't really like the way the hat looks. Can, we, can I be a little gangster for this evening? I kind of like that a little better. I don't know. Is that buggy, guys? Oh, well. Man, it's been a day. I started out this day thinking uh, I was going to have a lot of time to do stuff I wanted. And, uh, yeah, we, we got this new inline water heater, and it has just been fussing with our water pressure out here that we didn't notice with the regular tank water heater. And some of you out there are like, well, duh. So I had to install a booster pump and a check valve today and uh, run wire for a new outlet and all that stuff. And I, it wasn't awful. It just took a long time, and I was so looking forward to this time. I got the fire going out here, and uh, I, br I brought out some special whiskey. If you guys haven't had this green spot, single pot whiskey from Ireland, man, it's really good. It's really smooth. Those of you uh, whiskey drinkers out there, if you haven't tried it, give it a try. Yeah, look at that color. Boy, that's, that's a beautiful thing right there. So we're going to crack this open, and... Uh, those of you that are novices with drinking whiskey and the like, uh, there's a few ways to have it. I like mine on the rocks, and uh, I don't actually know what the heck I did with my glass, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab that glass. Ah, oh, sitting on side, inside on the counter, almost let the cat out. Cat's trying to escape. So I like mine on the rocks. I like it. Uh, I like it cold generally, and uh, I don't mind when it gets a little watered down. Um, I like the strong flavor at first, and then I like the flavor as it mellows, as it mixes more with the water. The PRS, they like it neat, which means no ice, just straight whiskey. And uh, some people actually add a little water to their whiskey and have it neat with a little water, and I guess that would be all right. Um, but the biggest thing about whiskey, and it turns most people off, like your first sip, you just want to sip it and uh, swish it around in your mouth a little bit and then let it sit. And don't necessarily let that determine the taste. That, that kind of preps your mouth for the whiskey. And then your next sips, your mouth is prepped. And they're going to be really good, especially if you're buying good whiskey. And as you guys notice, I am a bit of a snob. And uh, we poured a fair bit tonight because it's been a little bit of a stressful day. And I'm not going anywhere. And by the way, it, it snowed today. Yeah, it's crazy. And so uh, a rack right here in our little rural neighborhood. Um, somebody creamed a mailbox and just took out their tire, like bent it over sideways and uh, yikes. So it's been a little crazy here. Anyway, let me uh, take a sip of this whiskey and uh, take a few deep breaths here. Wow, that's even smooth the first sip. Dang. Tell you what. You get spoiled really easy on good whiskey. And then tonight, we're going to do a CAO cigar. This is called, the company is CAO. They make a lot of great cigars. Tend to be a little bit on the stronger end, uh, but not bad, honestly. And uh, if you're going to try them, just try a smaller size, like a Robusto or a Corona. You, you'll find them probably really nice. Um, but this is a flathead named after the flathead motorcycles. It's a box press. It's, it's a really beautiful cigar and they make these in all kinds of sizes they make man they make this one that is huge and it literally it takes me two hours plus to smoke and i'm a fairly fast smoker and uh crazy and most cigars that big you guys you, you may want to get the big cigar you know the adage is this is always bigger is better yeah whatever um but in this case this is one of the few few cigars of this size that is good most cigars um, blends and stuff when they go big man they just they're not nearly the cigar because you may not have thought about this but the filler versus the wrapper has a flavor profile and when you get more filler versus wrapper that changes and also i tend to like the ones with less filler and more wrapper i find i enjoy the flavor on the wrapper a lot better and so i like when the fillers is uh tamped down a little bit and so there's not so much um, a question came up the other night with smoking with some of my friends. And uh, those of you that are new out there, you, you may not know this, but every now and then you get a cigar that draws really poorly. And uh, it's either really stiff or, yeah, there's something going on. And it can even be your favorites. It's like, you know, cigars, they're not all made perfect. And your favorite brands, every now, you can come across a dud. But a couple rules of thumb. When you order cigars, always put them in your humidor 
for two weeks. And if you know they've been mistreated, it's like recharge that humidor. And what I mean is wipe it down with uh, distilled water again, get it good and wet, and then throw your cigars in there and just shut the lid and make sure that humidity is staying at least at 70. If you know that they've been mistreated and they've been out for a while, you can bump that up and, and keep it a little wet. I've done that. And it works pretty good. You don't want to over humidify them because then you get problems there. They, they can unravel when they're too moist. Also, there's kind of a fine line. Second thing is if you get a stiff cigar, you just can kind of gently squeeze it and massage it, especially after it's lit and it's warmed up. It, you can squeeze and massage it. And that often helps. You got to do it gently because you can break the wrapper and uh, you don't want to do that. And the other thing is that I often do, if you're a little slobbery smoking, which I am, um, you can recut the end. Sometimes that end gets a little packed down. Sometimes it starts packed down because the ends are often tapered, so they get rolled a little tighter. And so just making another cut on that end can open up the draw so that you can enjoy your cigar. Now, I've never done this, but I have a friend that does this, and he sticks his finger in the end, and every now and then he can pull out a twig. You know, it's just the middle of the leaf, the veins that feed it. Now, you don't necessarily always want to pull those out because they have flavor, and that's part of the tobacco, and that is part of what lends to the flavor. But sometimes that can really open up the flavor or the draw of the cigar. So I'm going to quit talking. You guys got enough cigar and whiskey information tonight. Yeah, this green spot, it's a little spendy, you know. It's, uh, I don't know, depending on where you live. Oh, what did I pay? 89 for a bottle? So it's not cheap. And I won't be drinking as much of that as I am tonight. But you all know, sometimes you have a rough day. Yeah, you haters out there, you Karens, you can. You can call me an alcoholic. I'm not. I enjoy my whiskey. I enjoy my cigars. I enjoy my little burner from my dad. You want a nice cherry there on the end. Try to get it fairly even. Again, probably not the official cigar aficionado way to light a cigar. You know, they generally, the official way to light a cigar. I don't know if there's an official way, the snub way to light a cigar is that you gently toast the end and you gently warm it up with like a hundred times filtered butane. No, I don't even know that there's such a thing. Triple times filtered butane so you don't get any uh, fuel taste in it and then you gently blow on it you don't draw like i did there you light it and you're like and getting that nice cherry end if you happen to go to a cigar bar and they light it for you that's what they will do now if you really want to be a purist you can get a cedar stick you light a cedar stick with a match and then you light your cigar and it can be done it does take some skill you're not going to be toasting it you're going to be holding it and drawing on it like i was making big flames but it, it works, and it's a great way to light a cigar. And honestly, I've done the whole toast in it thing, and I think that's just so they can charge you a heck of a lot of money at those cigar bars. So they can charge you 10 or $15 for lighting your $10 cigar or, or whatever it is. I don't know. I've been to some cigar bars, and they were actually pretty nice, and they offered, and I, I you know I chose to just do it myself. So, oh, let me, let me get a few draws on this, and... Uh, and we'll start chatting. I might throw another log on the fire before we get started. So, hey, if you go get some uh, coffee or some whiskey or light yourself up a cigar, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to take a few moments here. Oh, yeah. Probably puffing on it a little too much. Generally, don't want to go that hard on it. So, man, today was a struggle to not be a whiner and to uh, suck it up and be a man. <laughs> yeah, I was like, some days are a struggle, and I think you could probably relate to that. I started out the day, one, for grand plans, 
I was like, I have this camper that I'm refurbishing, a 66 little loafer, I think I told you guys about, and the top blew off of it. So I've been, put a new floor on it and I've been reinforcing the top. And uh, I wanted to do that this morning. So I got up early, made my coffee, came down, opened up the curtains and I'm like, oh, beep. Remember, save those exhalation marks so they actually mean something when you use them. It's going out. So I was like, oh dang. And I was like, well, I need to process some videos. I need to process some podcasts. It's like, okay, I'll do that. And so I start working on that. And then the kids are like, dad, there's no hot water again. I just, and this has been going on for like a week and a half, but I've kind of been ignoring it. I unplug the water heater, reset it, kick it back on. But then, and this usually happens to me. This is, uh, this is where the whining started. Cause it probably happened to me three times this week. I'm in there, that tankless water heater, man, it's cranking out the water. We are used to, we had an older water heater about 12 to 13 minute shower. And when it gets cold here, man, that just doesn't cut it. So that, yeah, it's, it, 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 yeah, bad, 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 bad. So I'm in there, it's probably 15 going on 20 minutes. I'm just in there, oh, just soaking up the hot water. And then all of a sudden I feel it like, oh, it's not as warm. It's not as warm. And I'm like, dang it, dang it. And I quick rinse my hair. And by the time I'm done, you guys were like, it didn't take long to rinse your hair, did it? <laughs> you're, you're, you are so funny, right? That's so funny. Maybe if you were a good friend, you'd pray for my hair. That it would come back and it would like me again, right? Anyway, that's like three times this week. It's just... Man, it just makes you, man, your blood starts to rise and you just want somebody to cross you because you're just like, oh, yeah, come on, come on. You go to the store, you're like, come on, Karen, bring it on. Say something, say something. But nobody did that, thank goodness. Anyway, so I was like, I have to deal with this. And I had bought a booster pump this summer and it's just been sitting in the garage. And I'm like, oh, gosh. I... <sighs> so I started the process. I went to the store, got all the plumbing parts, you know. If you have done plumbing at your house or you're familiar with that, you buy four times what you need. So it's like my bill should have been $25 at Home Depot. It was a hundred and something dollars because you don't want to go back. And you go back like once a month, take everything back. They hate you. They're just like, actually, they don't. They're fantastic. I don't, those people must be like made somewhere where it's just like, they're wonderful. As they're like, beep, beep, beep. All those plumbing parts. You're like, oh, jeez. Anyway, so I got those, got home, realized that I forgot my electrical parts. So had to go out again. Mind you, don't forget, I mean, I was excited today to get caught up on some of the fun stuff that I do, the stuff that I that I really love. I mean, I love taking care of my family, but I love doing podcasts and I love doing videos and I love actually processing them, posting them, advertising them, getting the word out, replying to feedback. All that is super fun for me. It's just, I really love that. And so... Here I am, I get home, I'm back to get those parts, come home. I'm in the crawl space and, you know, scooting around. And here in Belgrade, Montana, we have rock. That's what we have. So the crawl space is just filled with big river rocks that I'm walking over with my knees in the crawl space as I'm nailing this up. And, you know, and I get it and I actually get it all wired in fairly quick and then warn the family. My wife actually... Man, she made some killer chicken tonight. I don't know what kind of sauce she did that in. Dang. It was like, that was really, really, really good. So yeah, kudos to Adrian. You guys saw or heard her last time. Anyway, so then filled up some water jugs because I have a large family. And being without water for a while, I'm like, hey, anybody have to go pee? And of course, the boys are like, hey, no problem, Dad. We can just go outside. I'm like, okay. And their mom's like, I didn't hear that. Actually, she thought it was hilarious. And the boys were like, hey, you girls can go outside too, you know. And uh, I think I mentioned that we have a luggable loo, and which got a not so nice look from the ladies in my family. Sorry, ladies. Sometimes we just don't get it. So shut the water down, drain the water lines, and then cut into the water lines and get cut into them and yep I, even though i drained them i got i got soaking wet that's just i it is what it is and so i got the cool you know uh upinar tool those uh expandable fittings where they expand the pipe and then the pipe shrinks around them super cool 
So I got to put that all together. Got the pump put together with fitted with uh, the pipe fittings that needed it and a pressure gauge and all that stuff that goes in into doing this project. And uh, you know, put the monster Teflon goop on there. By the way, if you ever do a plumbing project and it's, you're dealing with pipe thread, man, that monster threaded sealant that stuff is the bomb and some of you are just like i don't know but those of you that know what i'm talking about chalk that up it works really well it is a problem solver anyway so i get it all hooked up and uh turn it on the first time and obviously i forgot to tighten some of the plumbing fittings so i got all wet again and then cranked those plumbing fittings down and i'm, I'm getting smart in my old age because i turn it on real slow i don't go bam you know you, you do a little crack and let it let it charge and so i didn't get that wet but i still got wet but i was already wet so it doesn't really matter that i was more wet how do you get more wet you're either wet or you're not wet i was wet that also solves the problem if you have to go to the bathroom you just do it right there nobody will know it's like let's say that funky smell you're just like man i've been working hard today so I, bad it's really that's really bad that's bad <laughs> anyway so i get it all hooked up and uh didn't realize this, but man, our pressure fluctuates so bad here. So that pump is kicking on and off, kicking on and off, and the water's completely off. So it's like at seven o'clock tonight, which I don't know, I think we're 8.30ish here, maybe closer to nine outside, enjoying the back to the store. And thank God the store here in Belgrade had a shark bite check valve. Man, I had to pay a bit for it, but they had it. So able to cut the pipe, put that baby in, split it in. And then I had a line to my irrigation where the ball valve was bad. So I bought one of those and replaced that. So it's not leaking into the irrigation system, which is really bad in the winter time because it just shreds the pipes. And uh, I've known this thing is bad for probably four years. And I usually just pull it apart and cap it. But I actually went when I got that check valve and bought a new ball valve. So that's into, so yay. And then I got all my stuff put away and now I'm out here smoking a cigar with you guys. And you're like, Tom, what is the point of that story? Other than it was a little funny. Man, I'm going through that way too fast. I think I'm going to need another four. Ah, things could get good tonight here. <laughs> the reason I bring that up, plus... The problems that already happened, my daughter's like, hey, dad, the Durango <laughs> needs new tires. And my wife is telling me all about all these problems and you just feel heaped on and you just want a compl to complain. I wanted to complain so bad. I'm just like, just, and I love my family. So I didn't want to say it to them, but I'm just like, and if you're a person of faith, even if you're not, you know, God is usually the one we go, oh God, why, 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 why all this stuff? And it's been like a week of this kind of stuff for me. It's like, yeah, things breaking, things needing attention, the tail lights out, this is out, the Durango's overheating. Anyway, anyway, I should I should just put the, this out there to anybody out there that's like a car guy. I mean, I know a fair bit about cars. I rebuilt our six liter power stroke in our excursion. Yeah, all the way. I didn't do the machining, but I tore it all down, pulled it out and uh, put it in myself. And uh, yeah, so I know a little bit when I, but I have this Durango, replace the water pump, replace the radiator, the hoses, a bunch of stuff on it, heater core. This thing about every two months, for some reason, is super low on antifreeze, gets air trapped in the system, and I have to jack it up and burp this thing, squeeze those heater hose to get all the air out of the system, and there is not a leak anywhere. And I've replaced the radiator caps anybody on a 2000 Dodge Durango have any idea what the heck's wrong with it and it'll be good for another few months and then I'll have to do it again and I just I I would like to know anyway get back to this I wanted to whine and it's like it's a problem I don't know if it's a problem it is uh, sometimes being a man is hard and doing the hard things because we are the go-to and we are the ones that take care of things and if you're a guy like that man you get thumbs up from me and you yeah you're like me you're frustrated there is the inner struggle and there is the inner turmoil where you are frustrated but you don't say anything 
and you do the right thing. And like today, I was frustrated. I told my family I was frustrated, but I was able to joke around with them. Now, here's the kicker. And some of you out there, you, you do this like me. And uh, you're working your beep off, right, in the crawl space. You're just like, it's Saturday. You want to be doing other things. What's your family doing? They're upstairs watching a movie. They're popping popcorn. They went to the grocery store. They got snacks. And you're the guy slugging it out. You are. And this is what separates the men from the boys. That's why, for my boys, you don't get the title of man till you are able to take care of other people, till you do that. That is what a man is. And today in our society, men are defined. I, I'm not even sure why. And if you can get a boner and you can stick it in a vagina, then you're defined as a man. And man, I'll tell you, most of the people doing that are boys. It's like, yeah, I do that. And I like to do that. And I like to do it a lot, right? You're just like, whoa, hey, what's wrong with that? As a person of faith, I know that that was God's gift to me. And he didn't create those parts by accident. And he didn't create those parts to fit together by accident. And he didn't create those parts to have such a great feeling when they come together like that. And so it's meant to be enjoyed. But being a man is so much more than that. It is the day in and the day out. It is the setting, the example for your kids. It is showing them how to take care, how to get things done, how to problem solve, how to persevere. How are they going to learn that if they don't see you and they don't watch you? And you're like, Tom, your kids are up watching movies. Well, that is true. But every one of my kids, at least once today, if not multiple times, Dad, how's it going? Do you need any help? Okay, those are the kind of kids you want to raise. Now, when I'm frustrated and things aren't going well, and this is just my personality, and I think it's probably a fault. So if you're like me, I'm owning up to a fault. So I don't. you can do with it what you want. But I don't like other people around. I just don't. I, I need time to process. I need time to think. I need time to problem solve. And uh, I just need time to, to be frustrated and to... Sometimes mumble cuss, right? Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I yell it out. I mean, I think most of the cuss words my kids have learned are from me. And you're like, well, Tom, didn't you talk about like saving the exclamation mark? Yeah. I don't always get it right, okay? And maybe those were exclamation mark times. I'm not sure. It obviously felt like it when I was yelling in the garage at the top of my lungs. And uh, I come in the house and the family's all like, Dad, are you okay? Everything all right? Do you guys relate to that? Yeah. The title of manhood, I take it really seriously. And uh, people that call me boy, or you're just a boy, or you're just a kid at heart. I am not. I am a man, and I earned the title of man, and I continue to earn the title of man and being a man means something being a man is that you are a strength giver you are not a taker and you don't draw from your family you input into your family and some of you out there I'm, I'm sorry this is kind of cut deep you're dependent on your wife you're dependent on your kids to give you strength and that is just a bunch of bs you are supposed to give it you are not supposed to take it now don't get me wrong there are times like when I lost my dad, I was bolstered up by my family. But most of the time, the day to day, like this stuff, I am the go to guy. I fix things here or I make sure that they get fixed. Like I had an incident. I don't know if I told you guys last time about the garage store. And on a Saturday night, went to shut it. <laughs> Things just like buckled and, it, you know, it looked like the door was having an earthquake as waves were going through the panel. And on Sunday, I got out there, took it apart did all the body work, pounded it out, bent it all back into shape, put it together, and then did the like frightening, like torque in the spring. But I didn't do it right. And uh, Monday, I, yeah, that Monday, I think is when I found out my camper blew off. And I was just like, man, I don't have the resources for that. Didn't lose it with my family. Went inside calmly. And, you know, me and my son actually joked because, uh, well, dad, it looks like it's going to be easier to, uh, <laughs> replace the floor it's like absolutely it is but i knew i didn't have the resources so 
I called the garage guy and uh, they came out the same day around in this area. That is a downright miracle. Man, the contractors here, including myself, we are so freaking busy to come out in the same day. And so this guy came out and uh, he did a great job. He wasn't here all that long, probably less than an hour. And uh, I made sure he got a nice tip when he left because I sure appreciated him. And uh, folks, being generous is a great thing. Those people that work, yeah, they charge a lot of money, but most of it goes back to the company and they don't make all that much money. You spare a 10 or 20 to tip them, they can get some lunch or take their kids out or do something like that. That's what a huge blessing. So I'm going to stoke the fire up and uh, I'm going to get a little, I'm going to talk faith in a little bit. So if you're not interested in that, why I'm up uh, doing the fire, you can tune out. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a little chilly out here tonight. I probably should have a jacket on. But I don't because I'm a man, right? <laughs> we may need to pour some more <laughs> whiskey here before we keep going. Oh yeah, fill her up again. Oh, yep, we're working on that bottle. Whew. How long has that been? 34 minutes? So yeah, let's talk faith. And uh, yeah, I'm one of those uh, Bible people. Yeah, not necessarily a, a churchgoer, a religious person. Uh, faith is uh, faith is not necessarily about going to church and uh, following all these perceived rules. Now, mind you, I have fellowship, and I get together with fellow believers every week. So there's fellowship, and I guess there's some people that call it church, and it, it really is. Maybe it is like the church, but. The church is people, and uh, the church is not a building. It's the people, and the people are the ones that go out there and make a difference. When you go out there and make a difference in somebody's life, you are being the church. The building expects us to give money, or the organization expects us to give money to make a difference, but we are the church. And uh, the ancient scriptures, I like to call them what, the ancient books of knowledge, whatever you want, because sometimes people are turned off by the Bible, and Honestly, a lot of it's got a bad rap in the modern church. Anyway, you're, well, I'm getting on a rant here. I'm going to stop the rant. One of those ancient books of the Bible, that ancient scripture in the book of Ephesians, it talks about husbands. And so we're talking about married guys and uh, probably with families. And it says that Husbands are supposed to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And those of you that aren't people of faith, you know that Jesus died on a cross, that he was crucified. And you may not believe that. The historical record testifies to it, and there's a lot of evidence to it. And so I would just point you in that direction. I don't have to argue the validity of it because I think history makes a pretty good argument about the validity of it. But the dude, for us, went the distance. And he didn't complain. Once he asked, he's like, ask if this cup could pass from him. And uh, it didn't. And then he set the course. He endured false accusations. He endured betrayal. He endured punishment that wasn't deserving. Whipping that wasn't deserving. Mocking that wasn't deserving. And so that is the call on men. And if you're like me, you count it as a privilege to rise to the occasion of that kind of challenge. You know, it's like that call to the Marines that appeals to something in every man or the army. Be all you can be. The challenge, the challenge of going into the Navy SEALs. We want to be challenged as men. That's what testosterone wants to be challenged. It wants to rise to the challenge. And so I put forth the challenge of the scriptures to you. Will you, on the behalf of your family, endure unjust punishment, unjust accusations, unjust mockery, betrayal, punishment, scorn, abuse. Will you endure pain? Okay, 
Christ endured that for us. And if you're not a person of faith, I'm going to tell you that dude, Jesus, he went the distance for you and uh, he didn't do it out of obligation. He did it because he loves you. He loves you so much. So you might just give him a little consideration. And I don't necessarily do a hard sell on the gospel. I do an invitation because I know that Jesus will prove himself to you. All you have to do is say, hey, God, I just listened to this dude, Tom Baldwin, on Cigar Night. And uh, he said I should give you a try. So I'm doing it. That's all you have to do. Okay. I have faith and belief. And I have seen God meet me in so many miraculous ways that I cannot recount. Is my life a cakewalk? Absolutely not. But it is nice when I'm going through those hard times that I know that someone has my six. And that is Jesus, the one that went through all those things that I talked to. That is the call on us. And you know what's great about that? Because men are strength givers. They give to their family. They give to their kids. They give to their friends. They give to the people around them. They give to widows and orphans. And they don't get it from any of those people. Absolutely not. So the real question is, where do you get it as a man? No, it's not, no not your wife. No, this isn't, you have a bunch of sex, so it makes you feel like a man. But truthfully, a bunch of sex drains you, but we won't go there. You should still have it, but maybe don't have that muscle spasm that squirts everything everywhere. You can maybe get a little control and have a little more fun more often. Did he say that? Seriously? Oh, here's my wife. It's a good thing she just didn't hear what I said. What'd you just say? Well, I can't say. She's waiting around. Listen to me. I'm taking the dogs out. Oh, she's taking the dogs out. It's a good time for a whiskey break here. Later, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> you guys are all like, man, you're puffing that cigar. I am catching up a bit here. All right, so you've been waiting for a long time here. And so a couple more puffs. Here my little Japanese chihuahua out there. She's a Japanese chin chihuahua. She's ferocious. And uh, she's barking at the nobodies in the dark out there. So the answer is you get your strength from Christ. You get your strength from the Father and the Holy Spirit. And you get it. From spending time in prayer yeah not this kind of road prayer it's a it is like a conversation with God that you just like talking and you're reading his word and you're meditating on it and you're getting understanding I know it, it sounds trite and it sounds religious but like the conversation I have with God is like the conversation that I have with you and I'm just talking about my day I'm talking about what's going on and that is where you get filled you say things like, God, what do you think of me? And then you listen and you close your eyes and pictures form in your head. And it gives you encouragement in ways that you can't imagine. You open yourself up to this realm that you have no idea exists. And it is a wonderful realm and there is unlimited strength there. You don't have to manipulate and suck strength out of the people that are around you. You can be a giver of strength and men give, men empower. Men don't take, men don't squash. Men are people that build people up strengthen people they make great people and if you are a great man the people around you are becoming stronger and greater and it's oftentimes bigger than you because you are pouring into them and that's what a man is you make the people around you look fantastic you equip them you break your body so they have what you need so if you're not a person of faith okay <laughs> there are some universal principles and god is good and uh, meditation is good for anybody and there are strength things that can fill you and strengthen you i find the most effective for me and i do yoga and i do meditation i do these other things but a relationship with a personal god that said hey tom 
I want the distance for you because you are important to me. That is the Jesus of the Bible. You may have got some pictures that aren't accurate. And I apologize that there has been a misrepresentation of the modern church, what a faith walk is. But Jesus went the distance for you. And as men, we go to the distance for those around us. So you guys out there, you can totally relate. You know the days that I had, and you know how you work to do the right thing and not say the wrong thing. All I say to you is kudos, good job. And if you blew it, you can always try again. There's no shame. I've screwed up so many dang times. It's like uh, this gray hair, it set in a while ago, but I'm finally starting to live in it and not have all the screw ups. Now, do I still screw up? Yes, I do, but not nearly as often. And these videos and my podcasts are to help you not screw up to realize it. There is a strength out there. And if you're like really skeptical about all this Christianity stuff, just do that simple thing. I said, hey, Jesus, I want to give you a test drive. He does say, taste to me and see if I'm good. Yeah, the Bible's confusing, but if you read it and you ask it for understanding, you'll get it. There is a supernatural thing that's in the process here that I just can tell you it works and you can do this. Hey guys, I got to let my little chihuahua in. Uh, the temperature change here, I kind of caught her off guard and uh, she, she needs to go inside. She's a cute little girl. Bit. So this cigar <laughs> is fantastic. I'm, I am, gosh, only a third of the way through and we are, what, 48 minutes into the video. So I'm not going to have enough words. I think I've already used up a lot of my words today and probably half of them was mumble cussing to myself, which it's okay. Okay. You didn't say it to anybody and you mumbled it and yeah, is it the best? Probably not. But you got to give yourself a little slack. And uh, I don't do as much of it as I, I've done before. And you're like, man, how do you have a faith walk? <laughs> faith and a faith walk is not about getting perfect. It is about trying with all your might and making progress. And I am making progress. And so you can make progress too. Hey, I so appreciate you. If you have questions about cigars or you have input about things that I may not know about cigars, which... It's true. I don't know everything about anything, and I love learning new things. Uh, I am a learner. I am a, what would you say it? I consume books. I consume podcasts. I love it. I love giving podcasts, but I love learning. And so, uh, hey, you can always tell me what your favorite cigar is, and uh, I would love to hear from you. You guys have a fantastic night, and uh, cheers. Okay.